wings. Have to say here, wings. Uh, hello and welcome to the Slow Bison, where we check out the lowest lows of our favorite shows, the worst scenes on our TV screens. I'm Space Botany. I'm here with my buddy Darty. I thought it was Carruthers. I'm sorry. No, Carruthers took a break. He took a break? Yeah, he, uh, I don't know, he's out in the seas. I think he crashed his boat into an iceberg and he's marooned. And I was um, reading a lot about the seas and um, I'm glad I'm dirty. <laughs> you can throw some seas puns in there if you want. No thanks. <laughs> uh, Darty, how you doing? Pretty great. I'm so glad to be a part of this space. Thank you. Bring that mic a little closer to your mu- no mouth. No problem. If you don't mind. How about here? It might be a little too close. All right, is this good? It, within drinking distance. Yeah, but like the distance. Like I'm about to drink this mic. Like you're about to drink the mic. Perfect. Have a sip. Perfect. <sighs> so, we watched uh, Wings. We did. <laughs> <And> it sucked. <laughs> it was not a good episode. <laughs> no. It's not a good episode to watch if you want to know anything about Wings. No, not at all. Uh, Wings, Season 8, Episode 22. Raging bull star ampersand at sign exclamation point, which I think is meant to be bullshit. That's what I was going to guess as well, yeah. Raging bullshit. A 7.0 on IMDb.com. I don't think it deserves to be that high. No, that was... Uh, I, w- I was looking for a 6. There's got, Like, that's a 6. That's 6 something. That's definitely a 6. Because, uh, first of all, apparently I've watched a lot of Wings, and that wasn't Wings. No. <laughs> No, that was not wings. Didn't see a single wing. He didn't. He. Well, we saw. You know, we'll get into it. But there was a picture of a plane. I okay, think. Okay, that's fair. That's there fair. was a pilot. They had an office the with a with a picture of a plane. I think there was a model plane in there as well. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. Let's just dive right into it. Hardly anything to tell you that it was a show about pilots. <laughs> if it is a show about pilots, we don't know. It's a show about boxing. I think it is. Um, yeah. It started off with. Who we found out eventually was Joe. I'll give you a little uh, description of what the episode was about. The IMDb description says, Joe and Brian go up against each other in a boxing match. That's it. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's the entire <laughs> synopsis for the episode written down. There's not else that you can add to it, I don't no, think. No, I mean, that really is the episode as well. You could add, like, uh, Easy Easy Carla. What's her name, Carla? Easy Car... Carly? No, it was Carla. I Carly. Yeah, it was something like that. Easy but Carla's fat sister. She was in it. Was in it. That's the nickname <laughs> that she gets at the very beginning. We don't hear her name in the episode. No. It's uh she's just she's known as the sister and found out these two people uh maybe the other one's married to the other one. I don't know. One of them's married to the one of the brothers is married to one of the sisters, the fat one. Who's not fat anymore. Who's not fat. She's looking good. Very She's good. She's looking 90s good. 90s good. Mm-hmm. Some quality mom jeans up in here. Mm-hmm. So we start off and Joe, we find out his name is Joe eventually. Oh. He's in a boxing ring. It's in black and white. I don't think this is the intro for every episode. Uh, uh, I would assume <laughs> it's not. <laughs> uh, but it is the intro of this one. It's him just like... Shaking his fists around. He's questioning how he got into this mess. Yeah. Uh, and then the episode starts and we find out how. He joined a boxing league. Which is on the island of Wings. The Wings Island. <laughs> they keep mentioning it's an island, but we never find out what island it is. You know, we kind of had to do... Uh, they only mentioned it once, and there was a map in the background. You had to do some sleuthing, but they're on an island, and I think they have a they have a boxing ring, obviously, right? Yeah. So it's probably what they do for fun, and this is probably a huge deal for everyone on the island. Do you think it's a, one of the Hawaiian islands? Uh, it's uh, – no, I don't know. <laughs> I, it's got to be, though, right? Like, where are, where are the other islands that we have a bunch of uh, white Americans hanging out? Uh, I think off the coast of Washington. Oh. I don't know. It didn't look like Long Island to me. Does Long no. Island have an airport? Ah, doubtful. I think it's a little too small. They probably got some boxing rings, though, at the very least. Oh, yeah, we've got to have a boxing ring somewhere. Um, uh, yeah, they're they're hanging out in the airport restaurant, um, or just the restaurant. It could be just a restaurant. It could be it could be an airplane themed <laughs> restaurant, and they don't fly planes. <laughs> I've never seen the show. I have no idea what's going on. Could just be Wings the restaurant. 
uh, uh, yeah, Joe gets behind the counter as he's like eating some chips or something. Yeah. Uh, Monk from Tony Shaloub. Tony Shaloub from Monk is Tony there. Tony Shaloub from Monk. Uh, he's stealing Brian's fries and I think pickle. Yeah, or he pepper. Re- no, he really wanted the pickle. Yeah, he wanted the pickle juice. I think. Or oh, he just wanted the juice. Like, yeah, he wanted the juice. He's like, eh, I want the juice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and yeah, that's when Joe comes in and he says, uh, you know, I'm, I'm signed up for a boxing fight and it's against his old high school bully. Oh boy. Uh, Mac, Mac, of a, Mac, 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 some, Mac, it's Mac. It's Big Mac. Big Mac. He's coming out. He's ready to fight this cream. He's covered puff. in, <laughs> that's one of the fun <laughs> jokes of the episode. Uh, Mac, he's covered in Thousand Island dressing. Oh, yeah. He apparently uh, tormented Joe, gave him a nickname, who they don't want to say, don't say it. Don't say don't it. Don't say it. Don't you say it. Uh, that's when Carla, Carly, Car- I, Car- Clara, yeah. uh, Clara comes in, and she's mentioning him as well, uh, did not do that in the back of the car with him twice. 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 She gave herself away. Ah, too simply. Twice. She gave herself away twice. She gave herself away twice. It's what it comes down to. <laughs> Mac got in that Cara, in the uh, back of that car. Boy, I hope that's her name. I don't know what it is. I'm pretty sure it starts with a C. It's close enough. They said it once, and then they said the they said the names of everybody in the episode once. Right. Aside from the big dude with the suit. Was he uh, Carmichael? Sure. Uh, yeah, we'll call him Carmichael for now. <laughs> His name's Carmichael. Uh, and then Tony Shaloub, he didn't get a name, so we're just going to call him Tony Shaloub. Tony Shaloub. Or Monk. As you know him. You know him as Monk. You know him from 13 Ghosts. Um, I think that's about it. He was a little nasty in 13 Ghosts. He's a oh, bad yeah. dad. He's not a good dad. Just letting his kids run around in the basement of a ghost-infested house. Also, was that his... Like girlfriend or wife, or was that just like a stepdaughter? She was hot. I don't remember. Shannon the, Elizabeth. His wife is dead. Right. His wife's dead. So because his wife is one of the spoilers for Thirteen Ghosts. Oh, his wife is one of, of the ghosts. Of course. We digress. <laughs> Excuse us. So God, it's fresh in my memory. We literally just watched it, and I can't remember anything that happened in it. Really. Um. Let's see. They went to their office. I mean, oh, that's yeah. where. Carmichael came in. They were training. So Joe and Brian, Brian being the uh, one that was in the younger fight? brother, younger brother. Okay, Joe. The Joe that... is the one in the fight. Brian's right. helping him train. Joe and Brian were training. Brian helping him out. Joe smashes his leg on the desk. And say, "Oops!" And then uh, Brian's like, "You can't let yourself get open like that, right?" Because, as you know, boxing rings they always have a desk in the middle. Yeah. Hey, you gotta you gotta avoid it, otherwise you're going down in the second. So it's it's one of the best things that um, Mike Tyson was known for. He would just throw people right into that desk. <laughs> I'm gonna throw you into the desk. <laughs> That's what he said every time. I can't get a vein to Holyfield to hit the desk, so I think I'm gonna bite his ear off. Bite his ear, stumble into the desk. <laughs> oh no, I got blood on the desk. It's never getting out of the mahogany. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh God! Is it You're killing me. <laughs> Carmichael comes in and then he calls him Cream Puffs. He says, "Who's yeah. the cream? Who's the puff?" And you know that's open to interpretation. I think who is the cream and who is the puff? Yeah, I think Brian's the puff. I think Jill's the sense. cream. That makes sense. Yeah, because uh, he's the older brother. But then guess what, guys? <laughs> Turns out Mac, Mac, right, Mac. He laughed his back out. He found out who he was fighting, his old high school bull, bullet. What's bullet. the, like, so you bully somebody, right? Mm-hmm. But who's the one receiving the bullying? Uh, bull, yeah, bullet. The bullet. It's, he finds out it's his old high school bullet that's uh, going to be fighting against him, and he laughs his back out, so he can't compete in the fight. That's real. That's it, the, the plot. That's what happens. Yeah. Uh, prize fighter apparently able to laugh himself <laughs> into not being able to fight. <laughs> but I mean, it's a comedy show, apparently. Oh man! As soon as I heard that laugh track, Dude. I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> I did not ex- look. 
I wasn't expecting this from Wings. I thought it was a serious drama about pilots. I did too. I thought it was a serious drama about boxing because of how it started off no. in black and white with no laugh track. Yeah, you you that that makes sense. You should you should think that based on how they started this episode and how what they did with it. Oh, uh, and then that laugh track came in. Can I have your fry? And then he <laughs> grabs the fry <laughs> and then we got a big laugh and, and then laughs. Brian says, No, you can't have my fry. Yeah. Everybody laughs even harder. It's like, this is classic 90s television. Right. And the laughs don't stop. They, they just really, don't stop. They don't stop. The laugh track doesn't stop. I don't know how often I laughed. But. Um, I laughed at Cream and Puff. Oh, yeah. Back, okay. to, Cream, back to Cream and Puff. Uh, so Big Mac, he drops out of the fight. And it turns out, who's taking his place? Uh-oh. Oh, it's, it's your brother, Brian. It's your brother. We got to fight each other? <laughs> well, brothers, we can't fight each other. Brothers fighting each other, that's not right. Oh, no. What will dad think? <laughs> and we don't know if they have a dad or not, so. I don't think they have a dad. Whatever dad thinks, There's doesn't Sam's matter. Dad. He's out of the picture. Uh, out of the picture, off the island. There's big confusion about how this happened. How did we end up fighting each other? How did we <laughs> end up in a fight with each other? Oh, well, uh. I might have put my name in the, the Goblet of Fire. I'm sorry. He did. He was an alternate fighter. And since the guy laughed his back out, now he's going to fight his brother. I'm sorry, Joey, brother. I put my name in the Goblet and it picked me. Oh, I never could have thought that was coming. And now we have a plot. Yeah, we're on to something here. <laughs> conflict, welcome conflict. Woo! Um, so there... All that training that they put into it went to waste because they just taught each other their moves. Yeah, that's exactly right. Brian knows exactly where Joe's going to be hitting because he was telling him where to hit. Oh, of course, yeah. He's don't do this, do this. He's going to do that and don't do that during the fight. And Joe saw all the defensive tactic that Brian was putting out. He's going to know how to undermine that. Exactly. Doesn't make for a good boxing match. No, we don't want to see that. You want people going in surprised. And we want to go, what, how many rounds are there? Ten. We want to go the distance. Uh, fifteen, maybe? Fifteen. Man, that's a lot. There's no way it's fifteen. It's got to be fifteen. Fifteen? Fifteen? Well, because... Of two-minute rounds punching each other in the gut? Yeah. You got to get Oof. a good, solid length on your, your boxing match. People paid good money to see... They did, and then when somebody knocks somebody out in the first round, you're like, ugh. Yeah. I just wasted... Three hundred dollars. I, I spent three hundred dollars to get these pretty shitty seats. To be honest, I mean three hundred dollars is probably nothing. I don't know why no. I said three hundred dollars. If you're getting ringside, you're looking at like ten grand. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. That's where Puff Daddy sits. Puff Daddy, uh, Pete Wentz from Fall Out Boy, of course, uh, and the drummer of Fall Out Boy, Ken. Ken. <laughs> Ken the drummer. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, so then it cuts to them. Uh, they're not in the office anymore. They're back in the restaurant <laughs> or airport. <laughs> it's definitely a restaurant. It's uh, it's half restaurant, half airport. Because they got fries there. Yeah, they do. They have fries. fries there are always chips. fries, yeah. I think his wife is like a waitress there or something, Joe's wife. Oh, she must be because Fat he sister. can go back there. Yeah. And, oh, you know what? They you, said they were partners too, but that's, no, 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 wait. That's too far. Don't. Cut that out. Yeah, all that right, comes cut. later. That comes later. Uh, all right. I'll edit that out Perfect. for sure. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, that goes to the training part. Right. The training montage, which uh -huh. is not really a montage. It's just a few scenes of each one training individually. Right. And it's all there, you know, in the airport restaurant. Of course. They're all doing their training around each other. The one scene that – or the one – set that they're able to afford i think yeah. the most of they can't afford to go back in that office no that office is did you just see scenes. all the props in that office uh -huh, you see yeah. all the pictures of the planes you're gonna smash your leg up on another desk while you're yeah. trying to do some push-ups they can't afford that many desks no of course not uh so brian is is training with the uh, monk Mm -hmm. Monk is, is running him through some jump ropes, and Brian cannot do jump oh, rope. It's the worst jump roping that space has ever seen. It is. I mean, I've seen some pretty bad jump roping in my time at the Jump Rope Olympics, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, the North Korean Open of jump roping. 
Uh, things were looking pretty bad in each of those. Yeah, well, I mean, that's too bad. They think they're the best. They do. They really tout their <laughs> North North Korean <laughs> jump rope supremacy. <laughs> but the thing is, they stop every time. They, like, hit the ground with the rope and then step forward. No, no, you got to have a fluid motion. It's got to be one. It's got to be jumping, and the rope just kisses the floor. It just kisses the just floor. Just a little... Even if it doesn't kiss the floor, that's fine. That's even better. Oh, yeah. If you can get some air off of it, some hang time. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, legit boxers. You watch them, like, just oh, jumping just, up and down. They're flying. They're literally flying. They're hovering with their jump ropes. Yeah. That's what they do. When you get good enough at, at uh, boxing, you are able to levitate. Absolutely. And that's why, you know, uh, Muhammad Ali would say float like a butterfly. I, I, that, yeah, that's right. I never put that together, but... Yeah, that's why he said that. What did he say after that? Uh, I think he said, sting like when I pee. Uh-huh. That sounds right. So Love that guy, Rip. Rip. Rest in peace, Muhammad Ali. He's, he's a real floating one. Floating in heaven now. Oh, yes. He's got his angel wings, but he doesn't need them. Nope. He's floating without them. <laughs> this jump rope. Uh, terrible jump roping from Brian. Like, yep. he's basically tripping himself with the jump rope yep, every time he swings it. He's doing nothing for himself <laughs> for the training. There's nothing going on. He's not gaining anything. No endurance. No, There's no cardio going on. He's just not jump roping, right? We saw him do four jump ropes, and he was already sweating. Yeah, it was done. He had a big old, you know, those 90s gray sweatsuit shirts with the cut-off sleeves. Yeah, yeah. He was yeah. sweating through that already. Cut-off sleeves, which, mm. I mean, if you're trying to sweat, you you need more fabric. You don't want less fabric. Right. Uh, he's got that big old sweat patch right under the neck. Tony Shalhoub is chastising him for not wanting to train harder. Right. That's when he runs off and he kind of hovers over who I think may have been somebody either waiting to get on a plane off the island or perhaps needed a chicken sandwich. Yeah. She was either waiting for food or had to get the hell out of that island. Like, it, it doesn't matter. It's but, up for debate. Um, Brian... He hovers. Or Joe. <laughs> Which one was it, was it? It was Brian. Brian. It was young Brian. Young Brian. Uh, he was hovering over this lady and just shouting about how young Bri Bri needs to go potty. I or, think the correct exact words were pee pee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this little girly needs to go pee pee because yes. Tony Shalhoub calls him a girl. That's right. He said, you're a girl. You can only do four jump ropes. Which it's is absurd because who's the best at jump roping? Um, Muhammad Ali? Okay, aside from boxers. <laughs> oh. Uh, I don't know who. Girls! Girls! They're great at jump roping. Yo, That's all they do. They're always out there on the recess yard just swinging that jump rope away. I've seen them go double oh, dutch. Dude, the, the double dutch, when you see the double dutch, it's in full swing. There's nothing like it. No. Nah, it's magic. It's majestic. Yeah. It's beautiful. Incredibly beautiful, so I don't know why he's calling him a girl because he can't jump rope. How many boxers do you think do double dutch? Oh, um, it depends how many boxers are friends with each other. Oh, they all hate each other. That's right. They probably don't do it then. They're all in fierce competition. You can't like your opponent. No. Because otherwise, I mean, we'll get to it. We see what's going to happen <laughs> right. at the end of the episode. You can respect your opponent, but don't you dare like him. Oh, yeah. Hold them in high esteem, but be ready to beat the snot out of them so obviously since boxers aren't friends they can't double dutch because there's no one else to double dutch with no of course not so no they don't they can't patty cake either no no. they can only do things that a single man can do a single man or woman or we got some lady boxers out there yeah they box that's cool there is uh the reboot of the kickboxer series uh was it with the woman it was. It was called Lady Kickboxer. Uh, what was the original series? It was Kickboxer. <laughs> I'm assuming that was a man. Um, I'm not familiar. <laughs> Jean Claude Van Damme. What? Well, you don't what? know? <laughs> you don't know Kickboxer? No, I'm sorry. Oh, dude. All right. It's just sidebar. A, we're gonna have to watch Kickboxer. We're gonna watch the worst Kickboxer, which you know IMDb gets pretty sexist, so I'm sure it's Lady Kickboxer. Oh man. Um. So Bri Bri, he runs upstairs. To apparently go to the bathroom. Pee pee, yeah. Uh, he goes pee pee, and then in runs Joe. Joe, Joe, and Joe. Joe has in tow, um, <laughs> fat sister, fat who is sister of Carlisle. She's riding in a. 
I mean, uh, how would you? Like some sort of like a like a palanquin. What a palanquin! (laughs) The hell is that? They're like they're like they're like carriages that you have on wheels or on. Oh wait, and you have the man that runs you. They're over. Yep. Yeah, I guess it was kind of like that. It's like a '90s palanquin. I guess I just didn't know the word to put with it, but I yeah, that's exactly it. Ah man, if you read as much Game of Thrones as I read, oh I'm sorry. He uses that word like every other palanquin. sentence. Palanquin. Yeah. George R. 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 Martin. Cersei got out of her palanquin. Well, best way to get around, I guess. Oh yeah. No, I mean it's it's brilliant. It's like a um, it's like a two man rickshaw. 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 I don't know. There's there, a word there, I know. There we go. Okay, <laughs> oh. so she's in like a a nylon rickshaw. Okay. Uh, she's laying down. Looking fine. She's got a backwards is, red yes. hat, red baseball cap. Yeah, and we're just sitting there wishing that she had a little white on it. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. A, a little, little M-A-G-A. M-A-G-A. Oh, oh, oh. Blonde girls in their MAGA hats, please. Give me some of that. Thank you. But no, she won't give any of that. Nope. Not until after the fight. Yep. She is withholding sex from Joe. That's her method of training, which, I don't know, kind of effective, I think. Uh... Yeah, she claims that he's got to keep his edge. You gotta, you gotta keep yourself full of that testosterone. I, I suppose so. I just have never had a situation come up where I had to do something really, you know, competitive, and also had sex withheld. Those are two separate things in my life. You know, completely separate. Oh yeah, I mean, the only reason you would compete is to try to attract a mate, right? Of course. That's why we do what we do. Yeah, that's why we're like, well, I, I can do more push-ups than you. No. No, I can I, do more push-ups than you. All right, you pretty blonde lady. You count, count the push-ups. Count the push-ups. Count the push-ups. And you get to bed. She gets to bed the one with more push-ups. Yep, that's how it works. Lucky her. Ah, she gets the stronger ape. But she, uh, she, she's withholding it. She's withholding know. it. And that, uh, apparently is doing wonders for uh, Joe. Oh, yeah. I mean, he ran with a lady in a, in a nylon rickshaw all the way across the island into the uh, airfield slash restaurant. It's it's pretty small. It's a, kind of a cramped space, honestly. It's um, cramped, but it's big enough to have that rickshaw. You can come have the rickshaw the because everything's split down the middle. It's like a long hallway <laughs> with things on each side, you know. He, so you can come on through the office, <laughs> and there it is. Here's your runway with your rickshaw. Oh yeah, uh, all airports are built like runways. Yeah. Just to make sure that the pilots don't get confused. It makes a lot of sense for them, and when I see them understanding, it makes me understand. It, Darty, it's helpful. When's the last time you were on a plane? Oh, very recently, actually. I was just on a plane like a month ago. Nice. Went out to California. Guess what? You don't have to wear masks anymore. Oh. I was the one of the first ones. One Ooh. of the first ones on a flight. They, were they like, announced it. They said, you are one of the first ones on this flight. You do not have to wear a mask. And then just applause, uproarious yep. applause. Everyone throwing masks up in the aisles. Everyone's screaming. Old ladies burning yep. their masks. And then like we took bras. off and everyone put their masks back on. So <laughs> it was fun while it lasted. Uh, I mean, I'm still wearing my mask if I get on a plane. Yeah. It's a cesspool. It's disgusting. disgusting. <laughs> if they would cycle the air out on there, maybe I'd consider taking the I mask out. They do, man. If you, you gotta conserve smoke, that air. If you could smoke on planes, Ooh. that would be the only reason to take a mask off. Yep. Light up a little cigarette, get some clean air in you. Well, sometimes I like COVID to drink air. a ginger ale. Can't drink that through a mask. <laughs> 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 I mean, too bad. <laughs> anyway, where? Uh, who's the? Who's the main character? Joe, Joe. or Brian? Well, they're partners. They're partners. We're no, getting don't, into that. Getting ahead of yourself there. Am right? I again? Yep. God, I just can't wait. You keep wanting to get back to this. We'll get to it. We'll definitely get to it. Oh. Um, you. So they're having a discussion. Uh, what's his face? Brian, he comes back downstairs. Oh, yeah, from the pee-pee. They're both dressed up in gym clothes, and they're behind the counter, the ticket counter of the yes. airport side of the restaurant. And... Th- th- they uh, Joe is upset with Brian yes. yeah. because... Some IRS bill didn't get paid. Forgetful Brian. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that was a big. Uh, that was a big deal. That was a big deal because that sets them off into yep. actually getting into competitive mode. Yep. 
It goes into, it digs into their past. Uh, you're always forgetting things, Brian or Joe. You're always forgetting these things. No, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Look, I'm sorry. I'm he gives sorry. a sincere apology, apology, but, you know, Brian says, nah, you don't mean it. Like, I know I mean it. And no, they, uh, Brian apologizes. Joe is furious. Joe is furious. absurdly angry. Um, out of nowhere, really. And that's when we get old lady character. Uh, Florence with her flounders? Florence with the flounders comes in. I think so, yeah. And she uh, is just psyched to have her day off and have some flounders. Mm -hmm. So, of course, she brings it into her work. You know, I love going into my work on my days off and just hanging out with the documents. Yep, Uh, dropping some flounders off. And she actually brings up that she's the one that forgot to pay the bill to the IRS. Whoops. Oh. She's old enough to. Yeah. There's some extra conflict added there. Turns out Brian didn't do it. He didn't even do it. He gave an apology for nothing. Yep. Ugh, you hate to see it. He's kind of you're kind of seeing their whole their whole lives flash before them there like how they grew up like he's not a great brother and he forgets a lot of things. And that makes Joe mad. It does. And it actually, like, I don't know anything about Wings, but I know everything about the dynamic between the brothers Joe and Brian. Exactly. I, that's the only episode we needed to see to understand these two characters and their brotherly love and hate. Oh, we learned a lot. We did. Uh, so Florence goes off to fillet her flounders, <laughs> and uh, that's when the argument ensues between the two of them. Right. They're almost coming to blows until Fat Sister gets between them. Uh-huh. And that's uh, that's cuts to commercial break. They're at the gym now. I think that's what happens. Um, yeah, it sounds about Is right. Anything in between that? No, they get they get real heated, and then Fat Sister Carly, yeah, she comes in, break it up, break it up, break it up, boys, and like I'll see you in the ring, and then cut to commercial. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's basically what happens. There's gonna be two hits. It's me hitting oh, you, yeah. and you hitting the ground. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to see you try. Uh, I mean, what do you even say to that, though? He had the last laugh. Face ground. There's Your gonna... face, the ground, tomorrow, goodbye. Goodbye. That's There's it. There's going to be two hits. There's going to be burning down the house and once in a lifetime. I love those hits. I love I those hits. I know nothing else. Top 40. That's my favorite. Wait, oh, we're having a boxing match. There's going to be two hits. Two hits. Just two hits. Two rounds. One round. There's going to be me hitting you, and then there's going to me be me hitting the bye afterwards to have uh, a drink. Yeah, and that's this place. It's the same place we're talking to. I'm going back to my work, <laughs> my my airport restaurant, to have a drink. I guess we live here, too. <laughs> this is our house <laughs> in the middle of the street, and we're burning it down because that's the hits. Them's the hits. That's all of them. Ah, we got to them all. Commercial break. Commercial break. We find them at the gym. They're getting ready to fight. Interesting choice, though. Uh, in this boxing ring, they don't have a desk in the middle of nope. it. That's actually, yeah, that caught my eye That's right away. Big plot point, uh, plot hole for me there. I couldn't take the episode seriously after that point. Yeah, um, you know what kind of brought it back for me was that um, Brian was wearing a, you know, a very cottony, fluffy bathrobe. Oh, which, yeah, the bathrobe. Which boxers actually do. You know, they do wear that. They're not wearing, like, silk. I don't know what does like, TV or something. Movies, people think they wear, like, silk robes. But, no, they just wear the really white, fluffy, cotton bathrobes. So yeah, that kind of brought of me lives. back in. Yeah. yeah. A little bit of realism there, but I, still, I was still on no the fence. No desk, though. No desk. Just looking like, where's the, where's the wood? Yeah. Ain't no wood in there. Well, where's the wood? How are we going to have a fight without the wood? You can't have a fight without a little obstacle in the middle of where you're fighting. Nice. Hardly. To spice things up. Hardly call it a fight. <laughs> uh, he's, what, Sugar Ray Sheraton? I believe so. And we got Rocky Bell Bullshit fighting in the other end. Yeah, Raging raging Bullshit. Raging Baki Bell Bullshit. Rocky Bell Baybig. That's right. <laughs> so it's Ra- the two brothers. Raging, it's the day of the raging. fight. And they're... They're ready to go. They're still angry at each They're other. They're rearing up at each other. Yeah. They're touching gloves outside of the ring. Outside That's of unheard the of. It's like they want to fight, but, you know, the older brother wisely says, I'll see you after the bell rings, you know. You don't want to have a fight before the bell Tony, rings. Tony Shalhoub gets in there, oh, yeah, and he, he breaks things up. He does. 
And I mean, when Tony Shalhoub gets between you and your opponent, you don't want to be swinging no. any fists because uh, Tony Shalhoub, it's going to be two hits. It's going to be <laughs> him hitting you and him hitting your opponent. You see a calm man, Tony Shalhoub, you don't want to see that guy get angry. Uh, still waters run deep. Oh, boy. Uh, Fat Sister is talking to Joe yeah. and is like, no, you guys don't have to do this. You're brothers. You love each other. You don't want to fight each other. What are you doing? That's exactly what she said. Yeah. Unheated. Right. Does not listen. Joe gets right into that ring, ready to fight. Ready to go. They're bopping. They're doing their boxing thing. You know, the bell rings. Referee is getting them ready for it, right? Yeah, is yeah he is. about to hit the bell. Oh, yeah. And then in runs Fat Sister. She gets right under that rope, climbs in. She gets in between the two, oh says my. the spiel again. And then you what What does Tony Shalhoub, the ever-present Tony Shalhoub, say? Uh, get this broad out of here. Yeah, get out of there with that broad. Get out of here with that broad. Referee picks up the fat sister, an impressive feat of strength. Yeah. Uh, and then just throws her out of the ring to a waiting security He's guard. Waiting. He knew, like, this happens a lot, apparently. So <laughs> it's like, we always got broads in this yeah. ring. Ready to go. He's ready to go for the drop-off. And, and not, you know, not lady back. kickboxes either. No. We got ladies that don't want to see fights. Everybody here, we came to see a fight. We came to see a fight. So, Bell, let's go. Let's get the bell going already. We want to see two hits. We want to see the, the, <laughs> the hammer hit the bell, and then the opponents hit each other. And then, uh, hopefully, uh, one face hits the ground, the other stays up. That's yeah. what I want yeah. in a fight. <laughs> two hits. Your face hits the ground. My feet hit the pavement. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good fight. Now, that's a good fight. So they got their, their stance, their fight stance, their ready stance. Yep. They're going. They're looking ready as any fighter I've ever seen in my you know, entire they're life. Shuffling, they're shuffling their feet. They're moving like a butterfly. Stinging like uh, when, when I pee. When I pee. And, and then. Yeah, they're circling. That's about it. They just circle. Uh-huh. That's right. They Joel, circle. Joel looks at Brian. Brian becomes a child. Almost immediately <laughs> becomes a child. Now, here's what I was thinking. Joe, you got this. Now you're fighting yep. a child. That child has no boxing training. Not you got all. the weight class difference on him for sure. Yeah, the reach. Oh, are you kidding me? The reach. He's got those tiny little nubby arms. Yeah, he's got nothing on you. So even, go for the fucking punch. Can't even Excuse reach a button. Me. You could punt this kid out of the ring. Yeah. Uh, I know it's not kickboxing, but it wouldn't even be a kick. No, it would you just, just be lift a him up. Punt. You know, oh yeah. You could do a punt. Give, give him the, the whole swing around like a windmill yeah. boxing I uppercut. Just can't see what I'm doing, but I'm doing a punt here with my arm. Oh, he's just Ow. going. He's generating punt. kilowatts per hour Ooh. with that with that swing. And that's what we wanted uh, Joe to do to that little baby Brian. But Joe didn't punch a child. No, no, he did not. Joe listened to Brian as Brian was like, thanks for teaching me how to ride a bicycle, Joey. Yeah, and we found out who the older brother was. Uh, Joe's the older brother teaching Joe's the kid. the older brother. Uh, cut to Brian's point of view. Brian is all of a sudden uh, an adult again. Oh, it's crazy. So we go back and forth. He's... I didn't realize it was a time warp show no, either. I didn't. You're like, how are you going to guess that with a show titled Wings and it's a boxing show? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Wings, boxing, time travel. This show has so many plot holes. It's got it all. <laughs> no desk in the middle of the ring. Brian, he looks over at, at Joe, who becomes a child. Yep. And now we were thinking, oh, Brian's got the edge now. Brian's going right. to be able to just punt that kid right out of the ring. Right. He's only he's only a year older than the small Brian. Yeah. So you should be able to do this, Large Brian. Large Brian, you got this. It's not a problem, Large Brian. He's large a kid. Brian, how hard is it to punch a child in the face? Doesn't hit the kid. Uh, Joey, um. God, Joey's like... You don't have to worry about... Yeah, the monsters under your <laughs> bed, little Brian. I'm your older brother. Don't worry about it. And that... Those he's a, words he's, grow. He's got a gun, too. He's got a gun, too. He's like, I took care of it, and he takes out his six-shooter, blows out the barrel, smoke. Now, that's that's when I got worried for Brian. Yeah, well, now, that was a gun in the mix now. Yeah, I mean, like, the, the great equalizer, right? right? A child with a gun can defeat a man with a, punt, a right. boxing glove. Right. Now your reach is, uh, who cares? 
Your reach is... You uh, have no reach now. I don't know. The at, child has the reach. At least an effective range of 2,000 feet, I want to say. Ooh, baby. That's a long shooting gun. He had a Colt 45. Yeah, it was uh, It was a gun. It was certainly a gun. <laughs> it was a Smith & Wesson Colt 45. <laughs> I think made by Beretta. It definitely shot six bullets. There were six... Five or six? Probably six. But okay. no, he already used one, so five. He it used five one on bullets. the monster. Yep. He popped a cap on the monster. Yeah. He's got five shots left. You can't dodge five shots. No. Like, good luck. I mean, well done. You dodged one. Anyone can dodge one bullet. Yeah. You're not dodging five. Anybody can dodge a bullet. Yeah. But five? Can you dodge a ball? Can you dodge a ball? Then you could dodge a bullet. <laughs> Wait. Other way around. <laughs> Let's start with the bullets. <laughs> That's the ultimate dodgeball training. If it was a dodgeball <laughs> episode, that's what Tony Shalhoub would have just been shooting at, right. at Brian. And they w- all would have been better for it. <laughs> that would have been the last episode. <laughs> Which, surprise, surprise, this is the penultimate <laughs> episode. The lowest rated episode is the last, the second to last episode in the season series. So they all just assume that we're familiar with all of this. But if you're doing this format... No. And you're just watching the worst episode. Coming into a blind. It's, it doesn't tell you a lot. It's not great. And I, I like, doing the, the episode so far with Carruthers, uh, he and I had found out that, um, him and I had found out that the lowest rated episodes, they often don't t- tell you anything about the show. Really? Yeah. You'll get, like, they expect you to know everything, and then even if you don't know everything, they expect you to have some sort of context to the characters and understand their relationships. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. Um, you know, the Florence with the flounder, the filet flounder? Yeah. She's probably a reoccurring character, and everyone cheers when she shows up through the door like Kramer, you know? Like, whoa, it's, it's yeah. flow again. She smashes the way through the entrance to the airport side of yep. things. Waving some fish around, like, I caught this instead of catching a flight out of here. And we were supposed to laugh at that. We were supposed to know that she does those kind of things. But we don't. We have no context for her. None. So it cuts, favorite, back, it cuts back to Joe. Joe is an adult again. And uh, frankly, yeah. I'm getting scared because these time cuts. <sighs> these boys are body swapping, getting big and tall. I don't small like Small and short. It's just it's, it's it's weird. scaring me. But Joe is looking at um, an adolescent Brian. Yeah. Who I don't remember what he said. Is that the glove, uh, the baseball one? Or there was another one. Adolescent Joe gives Brian right. the baseball okay. glove. But I don't remember what Joe. I don't either. I don't remember what Brian, adolescent Brian, said to Joe. I'm said something. Well, the thing is, they said something I'm positive. It. it was a very positive they're, thing. They're a positive, and at this point in the fight, you're thinking, stop saying positive things. We want to get the blood going. Yeah, start whacking falling. each other. Yeah. Start throwing punches. Like, you've got a child here to punch. Go for it, man. You've got Until a teenager they, They're here. growing, obviously, yeah. very quickly, so you have a very limited <laughs> yeah. amount of time to Yo, deal with this. By round three, that's going to be an old man. So yeah. maybe if you can <laughs> hold your ground... Like, you might be able to just crack that old man in the pancreas. An adult in his prime, weather that storm. And then round three, oh, yeah, you yeah. take him out. Two <laughs> you take out that geriatric. They're dead in round five. They yeah. both die of old age, for sure. And, you know, that would be that would be a fitting fitting end to two brothers fighting for their lives. But Fitting end for wings. <laughs> Good old wings. One more episode <laughs> after it. Yeah, that's that's the one where they die of old age. Yeah. Um, and then we get a third thing where they there's they're adults, but Brian is saying, "Thanks for picking me as your best man at your wedding." Oh yeah. Okay. He looks the same. Yeah. Looks the exact same. Cuts to Joe. Joe is in another suit. He says, "Brian, thank you for being my partner." Partners. They were partners. This whole time. Partners. They own the restaurant. They own the island, maybe. They own the entire island. Everyone seems to think they're important. They're the mayor and co-mayor. They're, they're, <laughs> they're both co-mayors. Right. And it's at this point, brothers don't shake hands. No. Brothers got a <laughs> hug. Come on, bring it in. <laughs> the fight ends with a hug. <laughs> oh, yeah. They hug each other real hard. Really hard. 
Uh, much to the crowd's dismay, very very upset crowd. No, they came for the blood, as you would for a fight. Yeah, and then of course, uh, Monk he he slides in there, shouting about them. The, you gotta hit somebody. You gotta hit somebody. They raise their arms in triumph, and they knock out Tony Shalhoub. Oh, what a fitting end. Oh, I love it. You got to knock out somebody. It is a fitting end to a boxing match, but not a fitting end to an episode, if no. you ask me. That it is, just kind of ends after Chris that. Chris, just show up, and then we get nothing. Nothing. We get no resolution beyond that point. But, I mean, I mean, that's where do we go from there? I uh, I don't know how they end the show. I'm actually kind of thinking about watching the end of the show. Watching just the last see. episode? Yeah. To see if they even referenced the boxing match? Yeah. I mean, that was a huge thing. That was a huge deal. That was probably breaking through a lot of trauma for them, you know? Yeah. Trauma that had We don't been, have to fight anymore. Trauma that had been building up since season one, episode one. Absolutely. I assume they're both in it. I would hope so. Yeah. You can't just introduce a brother character five seasons in. No. No, that'd be ridiculous. Especially if he's the partner, owner of the... Right. You couldn't have started the whole show without whole your brother, island? partner. Yeah. Oh, good Lord. Yeah, that's the end of the episode. Um, it, uh, very lackluster, very forgettable. I, <laughs> I hearken back to the episode of uh, Everybody Loves Raymond, where it's just nothing happens, really. Yeah. How we was get, that one? Yeah. Uh, Nothing happens. Nothing happens. <laughs> Not good. I think like uh, Ray Romano is helping his wife Deborah to Deborah Deborah helping his wife Deborah to write a book, a children's book or something. Yeah. And there's conflict. And conflict. Yeah. It's it's not good. But anyways, I got some uh, information here. So uh, we got a little information here, a little extra info that uh, we like to get into on the pod here, Darty. All right. Uh, so it did say at the beginning of the episode a writer's name that is not the same writers that I have oh. listed on IMDb. I remember you mentioning that. Yeah. It's some Charlie K guy. I don't know. I didn't get any, any information on him, unfortunately. I have, I have some information here about the writers, okay? Okay. So, one of the writers here it was listed as Peter Casey. Peter Casey. Now, I looked into him. Peter Casey, he's alive and well. He's still with us. Uh, he's a producer and writer. Still writing? Uh, not a whole lot of stuff on his, on his credit list these days, but he's got some heavy hitters in here. Oh, yeah. Let's hear him. He's got the Jeffersons. Okay. He was a writer for the Jeffersons. He was a producer for Wings. <gasps> And writer for Wings. I love that show. <laughs> he was a I'm produ- told. <laughs> <laughs> He's a producer and writer for Cheers. Okay. And executive producer and writer for a little show called Frasier. My goodness, he's just in he's in the mix of that. He's in the mix of the nineties. He, he is the nineties, man. He did some great stuff. Yeah. Uh we've got David Lee. He's another one of the writers here. Okay. Now, we got some good stuff here. He was a writer on The Jeffersons. The Jeffersons, oh. He was a writer on Cheers. Cheers. That's a good show. He created, with another uh, another one of the writers on this episode, Frasier. Frasier. I love Frasier. And he created, along with another writer on this episode, Wings. Wings. It's That's my favorites. favorite show. That's what I'm told. <laughs> uh, David Lee, he's, with, he's still with us. Good uh, for him. David Angel is the other writer. So we got two Davids. We got two Daves. We got a Lee and an Angel. We got a, yep. I'm sure that's what they called them. Angel. Lee. We need you Angel in here. Lee. You Angel Lee. Angel Lee. You can't just say David, David. David, David. No, Otherwise it's Angel Otherwise, you're not going to know which David. Well, if your last name was Angel, you know. David Angel. Um, he created and wrote, or he was a, he was a writer on Cheers. Cheers. He created and wrote on Frasier. No way. He was the creator and writer on Wings. I love that show. It's a great show, isn't it? (laughs) Yeah. That's what your parents tell you. (laughs) That's what they all tell me. Uh, David Angel, unfortunately no longer with us. Ah, rest Um, in peace, Angel. Can you guess how he died? Uh, 
plane accident. Oh, yes. One of the biggest ones. He was in the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Jesus. <laughs> he was on one of the planes that was uh, hijacked by terrorists and flown into the well, <laughs> well He died doing centers. what he loved. Yeah, very ironic ending. An angel got its wings, wings that <laughs> day. <laughs> Him and his wife, uh, I think her name was Deborah. they were... <laughs> <laughs> they were in the flight. It was Deborah or Diane. It was a D name. I hope it's a Diane. Uh, yeah. They were. They were. Uh, cheers. cheers. They were in a. They were in the, one of the planes that was uh, unfortunately flown into. Yeah. It was crazy. I looked at the IMDb. I mean page, that is, that is crazy though. And I always check to see how somebody died. Right. If they died or if they're still with. We well, gotta see. Because, yeah. Uh, I mean, you gotta look. You gotta look. You gotta That's our morbid curiosity. Res- we want to know how people die. Absolutely. Uh oh. Cat's an idiot. Uh, there was not a bug. That's that worked exactly as intended. Perfect. Um, so uh, there's a morbid curiosity into how your writers of shows die. Yeah. Uh, and I saw that one. I saw when did they die? 2001. Okay. 2001. September. Oh, Very this ominous isn't, date. <laughs> this isn't good. No. 11th. Oh, that'd be some odd coincidence. Yes, if it, it was. Would. Nope. He was on one of the planes. On one of the planes. So now, how many people? Like, what are the odds of that? How many people? It was like. Two, three thousand, five thousand, on a plane? No, <laughs> total. <laughs> <laughs> it was only like ten thousand people, right? Uh, f- I believe it was four thousand. Wow, about four thousand people that actually died in the uh, incident. In the incident, in the and then attack. on the plane you have what, like two hundred? Oh, I was counting them. Oh, okay. Probably get about two hundred on yeah. a plane, maybe. Uh, two hundred, two hundred fifty per plane. There were two planes that hit right. the towers. Do we count the other planes that landed elsewhere? Oh, the one that uh, didn't make its target. Uh, no, we don't count those. Okay, then 4,000. Uh, yeah, uh, I think... Now, this might be hearsay. This might be t- mm. telling tales out of school. All right. But Seth MacFarlane actually gave his ticket to David Angel, the creator of Wings. I've heard that story, but I didn't know it was David Angel that he gave it to. I know Seth was supposed to be on that plane, though. That I now I might have just made that up right That's now. That's really cool fact that you made up, man. <laughs> it could be fact. It could be fact. He's like, hey, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll catch the next flight. David, don't bother paying for your flight. I got you. I've got one. It's going exactly where you need to go. And he's like, oh shit, this is perfect. Thank you. How lucky am I? <laughs> Thank you, Family Guy, Seth MacFarlane. Oh, what a saint! What a saint! It truly is. Uh, the director of this episode, episode uh, was Jeff Melman. Melman. Jeff Melman, uh, absolutely prolific director. Okay. He's he had a ton of credits lifted, uh, listed. He directed seventy-seven episodes of Night Court. Oh, that's a classic. Forty episodes of a little show called Wings. <laughs> I love that show. <laughs> 20 episodes of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Hey. Uh, and then he had several different uh, episodes that he directed of Melrose Place, Just Shoot Me, Everybody Loves Raymond, Beverly Hills 90210, King of Queens, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, oh. Malcolm in the Middle, Desperate Housewives, Two and a Half Men, Community, Modern Family, and a whole lot more. That's everything. What other shows are there? I don't know. He had a hundred credits listed, and I think there are only ninety-five shows in existence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Last time I checked, yeah. It's pretty impressive uh, how he was able to direct on shows that didn't exist. Right. That's incredible. Jeff Melman, we salute you. Here it is. We love you out here doing it at right Slow now. Bison. Uh, so, what could we have watched if we were watching the best episodes of Wings? Uh, probably the pilot episode. (laughs) (laughs) No, unfortunately, that's not correct. Um, We had two episodes uh, right there at the tippy top with Mm -hmm. 8.6s each. Wow. What are you doing, whoopsie? Get away, whoopsie. Avoid that laptop, whoopsie. Oh. <laughs> That's how you get that bitch away. <laughs> she's scared She's scared of a monk chant? That's right. <laughs> Tony she lose. doesn't like chamber music. Ah, uh, I mean, who does? Uh, with 8.6s, we've got season two, episode 21, Murder She Roast. 
Roast? Yeah, yeah. I'm guessing it's a murder mystery dinner party? No, but that is an incredible guess. I Honestly, I feel like the writers of the show got this wrong by not writing that after they came up with that title. Yeah. Uh, no, Murder, She Roast, uh, Brian is forced to live with Faye. Ooh, Faye, her that's her Faye. name. Her name's Faye. Faye the Flounder Filleting Woman. Yeah. Female. Flounder Filleting Female Floozy. I love that floozy. Uh, so she's been around for a while. She's been around since season two. So, okay. All right, she's a recurring character for sure. Pops in, everyone choose. Uh, Brian is forced to live with Faye for a week and jumps to conclusions when he thinks he sees her on a fugitive TV show. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. And at that point, oh. they probably have no idea what this Faye lady's... Faye? Was it? Faye. Faye. I think it was Faye. Florence? Florence of I, the Faye. I keep wanting to come back to Florence. It's, it goes well with Flounder. Florence oh, Flounder. It does. It Either really way, does. Faye, you know, they probably... Yeah, she's probably this wacko weirdo character that nobody knows what's going on. Hasn't that's, got a clue. Sounds like a fun app. Uh, that sounds great. Yeah. I would have much rather enjoyed watching that instead of the boxing match we got. The one-sentence synopsis episode. Huh. Uh, and we also <laughs> had... <laughs> we also had, with an 8.6, Stephen 7, episode 3, uh, Death Becomes Him. Oh, boy. Sounds what intense. a play a uh, little twist there, huh? <laughs> now, the synopsis on IMDb was like three paragraphs long. It was so Ow. goddamn long. I did not want to write that down hand script uh, here. So I, I summarized the synopsis. All right. What's the basic idea? Here? Well, Joe and Brian are hired to pick up the remains of a wealthy patriarch. But a hungover Joe picks oh, up Joe. the wrong casket. Picks up. He lifts it up like a broad in a, in a boxing <laughs> ring. And throws it to the next man ready for <laughs> to receive her. There's a man, there's a security guard just waiting to get that casket. Yeah. And he shakes it around a little, walks off with it, and then just they're make like, sure it's in there. Yeah. This yep. isn't our wealthy patriarch. <laughs> no, 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 this won't do. Get the other one. This ain't a Rockefeller. Rockefeller. This is a Mercer. <laughs> Murder he wrote. I mean, that also sounds good. We got some shenanigans. Yeah. We got a big mix-up. Well, uh, I'm assuming we get right some planes in that one, too, if they're going to pick something they up. Fly? You know? Yeah, they fly. They fly. So, oh, they, yeah, that's what I saw. I saw that. Okay. I didn't put that in the synopsis, but they fly. They fly. They chartered so, to fly this, these remains. Let me ask you a space. If you're huh. watching a show called Wings, yeah. do you want to see anyone flying or not? I want to see... Well, if I'm not about to see a person flying, I at least want to see a bird flying. Of course. Any flight. Yeah. I, I don't think we saw any flight. I in want that something to, to take to the air. Yeah. There, were no, there was no flying. No flying. No flying in this episode of Wings. Uh, so, you know what? I don't give it a 7 out of 10. I, I give it... I give this like a 5. Yeah, I, I, would, say, I would say 5 or 4. I mean, I'm going to stick with 5... Because they probably hashed out a lot of things people wanted about those brothers, you know? Oh, they were yeah. probably waiting for that. People have been watching for seven, yeah. eight like, seasons. When are they going to resolve this brotherly feud? Just waiting to see that, like, oh, these guys hate each other. Yeah. We got to see them duke it out in the ring. got to duke it out. And I'll bet when this episode came on, people were like, oh, I thought I turned that sound <laughs> off. I thought I turned my phone notifications off. That's what they off. said. <laughs> Why would they say that during this episode? I know. They didn't even have cell phones back then. It was the, the late, ni early 90s, mid 90s. You're hearing it a was plane. The 90s. It's just a plane you're hearing. A plane took off. My cell phone is much more an episode of Wings than this episode of Wings was. I would say. Waiting to see these brothers duke it out in the ring. And what do they do? They hug. They hug it out. Aw, oh, disappointing resolution. Hug it out, hug it out. To eight years of yeah. tension. And now, to be uh. fair, we don't know the end. They could. Do the fight. They, they could, could do, the, do fight. the fight. It's a two-parter, right? No, this is an episode, the second to last episode before the two-parter. Okay, before the two-parter. Yep. So we have the two-parter. There's plenty of time in there to have another fight. Oh. You know, well, let's skip all the training and we could just go ding, 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 bell. Yeah, and maybe we could get a bare-knuckle boxing match going on. Oh, see, that's where... I would love to see that's it. That's where brothers really shine. Brothers don't fight. Brothers got to fight. Sorry, I was going to say brothers don't <laughs> hug. Brothers don't hug. Brothers got to fight. Bow. 
<laughs> Pop him right in the kisser. Uh, see, I'd, I'd like to watch that sometime. We'll watch it eventually. Okay. We're going to watch all of Wings to see if it is your favorite show, Darty. Right. And we just, yeah, we got to go all the way back to the first, the pilot episode. The pilot episode. Where uh, I'm, you know, fingers crossed for a, a pilot joke in the pilot you, episode. Why not? You would hope for one, right? I don't know when they started calling it a pilot or why they call it a pilot. Because it flies right in. Flies right in. <laughs> hey. Your pilot's here. We're your pilot's here. Yeah, I can't and wait. We've got a new show for you. It's called Wangs. And that is Wangs. We just did Wings. We Wangs. Did Wings. Uh, and uh, we'll have a new show for you next week. Uh, we'll see who the guest is then. I don't know if Carruthers is going to be coming back off his hiatus, but uh, wish him the best out there on the wish high Wish you seas the best. Uh, be careful of those uh, waves. Got to watch out for them waves. The big ones, yeah. Perfect storm. I saw them go right oh, up the bye. side of a wave and basically die. Anyways. I'm Space Botany. For my co-host this time, Darty, we'd like to thank you for listening, and you have yourself a wonderful week. Bye!